Good morning, welcome to CADEX TV. My name is Frank Fortunato. Today is Thursday, September 3rd, 2015. If you want to follow us on Twitter, go to CADEX TV. Here's an interesting story. Uh, we spoke yesterday as to how a number of reinsurers were hoping that mainland Chinese insurers would pick up most of the bill for the Tianjin explosion. Now, uh, mainland Chinese insurers are saying that, in fact, uh, the losses to their companies will be minimal because they've also reinsured with reinsurance companies. Uh, the uh, chairman of PICC Property and Casualty, one of the big Chinese insurers, said the effect of the blast on the company's net profit this year would not be significant because it had reinsured many of its deals in Tianjin. So uh, we'll have to wait and see because yesterday the expected losses uh, it were indicated to be able to rise to as high as $3 billion. The migrant situation in Europe continues to worsen, of course. It's on the uh, lead item of most news broadcasts. However, it began to again directly affect the Eurostar servers between London and Paris and London and Brussels. Uh, trains were in chaos last night. Many trains took as long as 12 hours. One train took as long as 17 hours and was essentially stopped uh, overnight uh, while police tried to clear the tracks ahead. Uh, conductors were going from car to car warning passengers to listen for sounds of possible migrants on the roofs of the train. It's a very difficult situation. The city of New Orleans has signed up Swiss Re as a partner as it looks to transfer hurricane risk to the private market and hope to pre-fund catastrophe losses. In a document released by the city, they said they're working with Swiss Re to identify the most advanced insurance coverage models to reduce exposure in the face of risk. This could include parametric policies, risk pooling, and green infrastructure modeling. Hurricane Katrina, of course, hit New Orleans back in 2005. Um, and in fact, the uh, mass exodus of the city's population has uh, continued to see population in the city reduced by about 50 percent since pre-hurricane totals. Lloyd's released a big study today saying that the reinsurance and insurance industry remain preoccupied with the traditional risks it's always covered while the landscape is changing and more significant threats are remaining underinsured. Uh, Inga Beal is taking the lead on this, the CEO of Lloyd's, she said, the fact is that the industry invests billions in risk models and analysis to better understand risks like U.S. wind or earthquake, but these are increasingly the big risks of the past. Ms. Beal noted that the study identified things such as cyber risk uh, as being uh, significantly more important, human pandemic, uh, solar storm, and plant epidemic. The study was done at Cambridge University at the uh, Cambridge Center for Risk Studies. It's available on Lloyd's website. Standard & Poor's is saying that London-based reinsurers, reinsurers and some of their North American reinsurance peers appear most exposed in the event of a rare and extreme cat loss. According to a report issued by the ratings agencies, um, a number of Lloyd's-based reinsurers along with North American companies demonstrate lower capital adequacy in Standard & Poor's rating analysis. Uh, should an extreme loss occur, according to S&P, our ratings on those companies that have the weakest capital positions after the event are likely to come under the most pressure. We would expect such a company to be in a relatively weak position to be able to retain both existing business and substantially benefit from any subsequent rate improvement. Um, translation, uh, those reinsurers might not be able to survive a big hit to be able to benefit from the inevitable increase in premiums. The president of Guatemala, Otto Molina, resigned today to face charges in a customs fraud scandal that has generated a sweeping protest of citizens against the government. The resignation was viewed as a, as a victory for the rule of law in a country with a long history of impunity for the business and political elite. Meanwhile, in Washington today, Treasury Secretary Jack Lew, in an interview with CNBC, uh, diplomatically but firmly criticized China's handling of its currency devaluation. He said, quote, they have to understand that I make this point to them quite clearly, that there's an economic and political reality to things like exchange rates. They need to understand that they, that they signal their intentions by their actions and the way they announce them. And they have to be very clear that they're continuing to move in a positive direction and we're going to hold them accountable. 
Mr. Liu is going to participate in a meeting of G20 financial ministers in Turkey on Friday, and he's also going to be involved in the upcoming meeting by President Xi Jinping of China when he visits the White House later this month. He said, I think we've been very clear for a long time with China how they manage their exchange rate is a matter of great concern to us, and they need to be willing to let market forces drive the value up, not just drive it down. Very interesting discussion. President Xi Jinping, of course, today was on a reviewing stand in Beijing celebrating the 70th anniversary of World War II. He also announced that the Chinese army would be downsized by 300,000 troops. The savings are going to go into uh, increased cyber uh, warfare um, development. Very interesting. It's going to be an interesting discussion with the President of China and the President of the United States. That's all we have today. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.